Okay, so welcome back to another video. And in this one, we are actually gonna be setting up the table to put the billet runners onto so we can machine the angle injector seats and the fuel rail seats and a few of the other features on there. So we're finally getting to the full facts of the table setup. Um, so, in the previous video, I showed you how I've aligned this part. So at the center of the model, if I turn the model on there, the center point of this model, not the center of the part, but the center point of the model is in the center point of this table. Now I'm still modeling it as the longer 800 mil table, because that's sort of relevant in this sense. But I'm actually going back to the short table. I think it's 600 mil because, because we've done all the um, parallel tool paths, we've done all the flanges and all the sides and everything like that. We don't actually need big spaces to come around on the tool because everything's going to be pretty much worked um, just across this area here. So we're not really going to go outside this boundary bar a bit of um, lead in and lead out with a face mill when we do a couple of bits here. But we that clears the top anyway. So we've gone back to using the little table idea um, because it's just gonna be a little bit easier. So all we've got here is we've got 27 mil holes straight through the plate. And all that is for when we machine the inside of these, because obviously you can see these ones are nice and finished on the sample. My ones were only roughed out. So we've got to finish these and I want somewhere for the coolant to go. So we'll whack a hole underneath each one. So any coolant and swarf with a 27 mil hole through the plate, it will run out nicely. It's not gonna build up because if you get too much swarf in a deep pocket, it just sometimes turns into a bit of a, steel's worse, but the alley can do the same. You just start recutting the chips and make a bit of a mess of it. So they're just drainage holes. Then if we come in a little bit closer, we've got, these are clearance holes for M10 bolts. That one's gonna be an eight mil hole for dow pin. This one up here is gonna be an eight mil hole for a dow pin. And the rest are 6.5 mil clearance holes for M6 um, bolts or cap heads. Now I may, I'm not too sure yet, I may turn the plate over and countersink all these holes so the cap heads can go right up inside the plate. Not sure if I'm gonna need to, but I might. Um, the only thing I need to make sure, I want the dowel pins to be a nice fit. They're tight in the part. You have to tap them in with a mallet um, just gently tap them in with a mallet and then to get them out you just have to put a set of soft grips on them and give them a twist and they will come out so I want them to stay um, they can stay in the part that's fine but I don't want them tight in the part and in the table so in the table I want it a little bit looser so that it will come off relatively easily I, it can't be a sloppy fit I just don't want it to be a, a leverage where I've got to try and get something underneath it to pry it out because that will just be a pain so that's what we're gonna do now. Um, we've done our tool path and everything ready for that. And I'll put it on the USB, I think, if I remember. So we've got the table apart. If I just show you here. So, because we're using the smaller one, the vice is already set up. You see in a previous video that the fourth axis is aligned in Z and in Y. So I've left that under the cover for the minute and I'm actually gonna machine this in the vices um, with the ends taken off because it gives me a little bit more clearance. So I've clocked it up off of the face at the back here to make sure um, that we are true because if we're not true on there, then obviously everything's gonna be a little bit off to the bolt pattern when you bolt it to the uh, rest of the setup. So we're good. We're centered in the Y, we're centered in the X, um, and our part will obviously be centered in that sense. And we're just going in the middle of this. So we have a, a little bit of room at each end. Um, and yes, the advantage being is that, if you remember in the past video, I said this plate is bowed a little bit. So we needed to work on that to get it flat. 
Now we can use this one. This one was as flat as I'm gonna get it. It didn't have that bow in it. And being shorter, the error when we come to try to align this fourth axis table is gonna be a lot less because it's 200 mil shorter. So it's quite good, you know, coming in shorter, as short as you can. So what we do now is we'll go ahead and we'll drill um, all them bolt clearance holes. We'll drill the through holes for the, the coolant and the swarf clearance. And then I'll probably flip it over rather than have all the cap heads sticking out the back. Um, I think I'll flip it over and counter bore them just because. So yeah, I'll get that done and I'll show you when we're finished. Some other bits we got on the go. Some brackets that I'm making. Right, we're done. I do love a U drill in a bit of alley. It's a really nice finish. Love an airline on the camera as well. Okay, so this should be our bolt pattern. Now I need to see how they've turned out. In regards to sizes. This is my tool drawers. Oh, yeah. Here's some eight mil dowel pins. I actually set this to wear, which I don't normally use, like in the control. So I hope it hasn't gone too big straight off the cuff. And it hasn't. It's slightly undersized, which is perfect. It seems to be, if you put in in, uh, in computer on Fusion 360, it will go bang on every time. If you put wear, so that you can adjust the wear for, what tool am I? Tool six is my six mil end mil. So if I go into my offsets, and I put some wear in the radius, then if there's nothing in there, it's always undersized. It never does it bang on first time. But if I was to change that to in control, um, so I can't adjust it, I have to go back into Fusion, then I guarantee that would be bang on size, a good fit. It seems that it's always under if you do it here, which is good in a way, because you know you can creep up on your diameter rather than going over size. Okay, so we've done them dowel pins. Um, I had to actually go to minus 0 0.08 to get it where I need it to be um, but they fit in there they fit in there nice so they got a little they won't get stuck in there a little bit of wiggle room but they just sink down nice there so that's good the dowel pins are okay and it was we took it out to 8.02 millimetres. Like I said, I don't want the dowel pins getting stuck in the plate. Now this is in there, let's just check it goes on. Um, and I think it was, I think it was this orientation.
There we go. So that is rock solid. There is no wiggle room, no slot or movement at all, which is exactly what we want. So that's how it's going to be located. And then you can see down there, we've got the through holes, which will be for allowing the coolant and swarf to drain out when we machine these. And then we'll have the end pieces back on. For example, that will be back on its pins there. So we're getting somewhere. All the bolt holes, well, I'm assuming if the dow pins line up, then the bolt holes are bound to be lined up as well. So this side of it's done. What I'll do is I'll flip it over now. I'll clock off of one of the bores because obviously a counter bore is just clearing. So if something's a little bit out, it's not gonna matter. So I'll flip the plate over. I will see if I can lift this off one handed. Yep. That's it. I'll flip this over. I'll clock it off one of the bores. Then I'll counter bore all these other holes so that the cap heads will sit nicely in the plate. Um, and I'll make the counter bore big enough to put a washer. Because one thing I've noticed in the past when I've done most of the fixtures I do are normally alley. And if you put the bolt straight down into it and then you're doing it up all the time, you just end up chewing up the hole and before you know it, the bolt won't go in, etc. cetera. Um, I know this isn't like a daily fix you're gonna get used constantly, but um, I'd rather do it that way and make enough space for a washer for an M6 and an M10. And then we haven't got to worry about chewing the plate up. So I'll get this flipped over and I'll get the counter balls done. Okay, so he's just finished machining um, the counter balls. Hopefully, while I've been sat at the desk, half asleep, because it's half past one in the morning. But I've not had time to be doing this during the day as well due to other work. So I need to get on with it. So the only time is to come back when everyone else is in bed at home. Right. So let's just check. So the M10's in there. There you go. Big enough counter ball for the washer and the cap head. And then the same for the M6, big enough for the washer and the cap head. So that's all them done. I didn't program chamfer, but I'll just use a countersink in the drill, just quickly put chamfer on then so they're not sharp, don't want to be cutting the hands. And then that is the plate um, done. And she's ready to bolt up. So next up, I'm gonna, well, right now I'm gonna get packed up and go home. Then we'll look at getting the plate bolted back together here, um, get the end pieces back on. We'll get it bolted up to the fourth axis next. And then we'll look at how far out we are on this end and how we're gonna go about aligning that if it's too high or too low um, and see if we uh, what we need to correct. So we're looking to that next. So I have even thought about, um, rather than the bearing block, getting rid of this, putting something else in here, um, a bigger bearing with a small ID and actually seeing if it works better if I run it off the tail stock because I have got a tail stock for the fourth axis. Um, so that could be a simple way of doing it, but then the bearing block's easy, I suppose, if I get the heights right. So yeah, that's what we're gonna come back and do next. So I'm not gonna end the video there. We're gonna come back and I'll carry on. So we'll see you shortly. Okay, so we're carrying on trying to align this table and it is really testing my patience. Uh, I'm not having much luck at all in any way, shape or form. I was almost there and I've just gone backwards by a mile. So you'll notice I put the longer table back on. The short one that we machined is down there because I couldn't get the shorter one any better than I've got this one. And I don't really know 
where I'm going wrong. So before I bolted this bit on there, we went back to basics and I previously aligned the Y axis and the Z axis on the face of the platter, the HRT 160 um, with nothing on it. Now I thought that's okay, unless this is slightly machined wrong in, in one way or another. So let's put this back on there and see where we're at. So if I put you guys on the, um, the tripod, probably be a little bit better rather than my wobbly hands. Let's try and line you up a bit there. Okay. So we have got the weight of this hanging off at the moment, um, but I'm not going to unbolt it again. So if we set ourselves at Z0 on the top there, and we drop down, we get pretty much to the bottom. We're 0 0.05 millimeters, too foul. Um, that that is coming out, which in theory means it's lifting the table this end. Um, so it's tilted upwards. Now, Without this on there, we got this face by shimming everything and it's good. Now, do I go back to shimming this again without? Because if this is true with them shims, I like to leave this fourth axis on the table. I don't want to be taking it on and off and shimming everything every time I just use this, we say a chuck on a little part with one inch stick out. So we've got two thou there. If we go back up to the top, uh, sorry, to the center, where we're at zero, which is funny because it, it actually, it only seems to come out after your halfway. So all the areas in this bottom section. So if we're there and we go right across in Y, then you can see we are under by 0 0.02. So just less than one thou, um, we're angled inwards so we're angled that way and now let's run it all the way to the other end and we are just over 0 0.01 this way which makes sense so it, it could do with a little tap um, it could tap round ever so slightly now whether we're able to do that yeah, loosening absolutely everything off again. I'm not sure. Might be able to give it a clout of the back there. We'll just give it a knock and we'll see where we're at. Okay, so it's still 0 0.02. So we need to really knock it round to sort of run under. So let's try that. Okay, so we try again, we're on zero. Let's run it back the other way. We're pretty much still on zero. So we've got a bit better alignment that way. And again, I just want to show you up and down. I don't think that's going to change anything. So from the center to the top, we're still on zero. Well, not quite the center, but as good as so still on zero still on zero and as we come past the center line and go down we're 0 0.045 um high here so zero all the way to pretty much center and then it goes two thou out like the part comes down and just kicks out the bottom 
uh, which anything you'd think it would kick in because it's got the weight of the 800 mil table along it. So that's where we're at there. Now let's just angle the indicator a bit and go up into our bore. And let's see, let's find a low spot, which is about there. We're not quite, let's get ourselves on Z0, or A0, sorry. Um, so we're on A0 on the gauge, on the screen, shall I say. This may not be true yet, because I can't remember if I've dialed this back in properly. But just as we're reading, so we're A0 on our G54, and we're A0 on the dial. So let's rotate 90 degrees. That's 90.4, and we're pretty much still on zero. Rotate the other way. Well, there's 94. Thereabouts, we are trying to see over the camera just under 0 0.02 millimeters. So that's as good as I've been able to get that. Now we want to come off here, straighten our indicator up a bit. And let's have a look and get ourselves zero here. Okay, so we're zero there. Let's run across the wire. So we weren't, weren't on zero there. We are massively uh, out. So let's just, we're gonna have to get ourselves sorted again. And work out where we are. Right. Okay, we're a little bit closer. Dial it in bit by bit. Nearly there. That's O2 out. Back on to zero. Job back across the wire. It's a little bit up and down, but we're back on zero. So It's not perfect because we face milled across that. So there's a few bits of error where it steps over. So that's as good as we can get in the Y axis, the Z axis, um, and setting up level for the A0 on the plate. So. That's where we are with that so far. Now, we haven't got the bearing block on the end. And I just will show you where we are at there. So if we set up without any support, we'll see where we are, how low we are at this end. And you can see we are really low. We're off the, off the indicator there by quite some margin. But of course, you can see I can lift that up with my hand to get that aligned. So let's go back over. And I wanna drop it off the edge.
I know this is kind of irrelevant without the pillow block on it, but I want to see what it's like on this machine side as we run down the table. Now that is 0.4 out um, that way. So we are misaligned there, but then we're aligned on this face, which means the bolt holes or this side machining is out to them, but they were all done at the same time. So if you was to try and pull that back, you're not gonna pull it back 0.4 without putting a massive stress on here. Um, so I'll need to remove these dowel pins because they're not gonna allow that to straighten back up. So currently we are 0.4 over there. Let's just double check it because I'm obviously doing something wrong with all of this because it's getting in a right old muddle. And I can't believe I've been here. So again, exactly the same as before, 0.4 by the time you get to this end. Let's just do that again. So this side, yeah, is low by 0.4, which means the whole table has really got a shift by 0.4 but the platter face is straight. So we need to remove the dowel pins and maybe make the holes in the table bigger. Because if we move the fourth axis, then it means the face isn't gonna be straight. So the face, for example, will be wonky and be misaligned as it goes around. So we've just got alignment issues everywhere. And it's where to start. And this is my problem that I've been doing this for the best part of nine, 10, 11, 12, eight hours today. Um, and I haven't actually gotten anywhere. And that's so frustrating when you have a day like that. I was trying to get further with the smaller plate thinking well, I only need the small one, but I'm getting the same sort of errors everywhere. So if that is just within a couple of thou, now, obviously, I know the further away we come, that more exaggerated that's going to get. It's going to just sort of come off at an angle in whichever direction we was out by. Um, but we got that pretty true. We got that within like 01 in the wire. So being out here means that our bolt holes must be out. And the only way to do that is to undo the bolt holes, take the plate off, take the dowel pins out because we need the we need to be able to sort of wiggle this around a bit. And regardless of the height, we need to know that that's straight, that's straight, and this plate is bolted on straight, not coming out here and not coming out there. We need to get that straight on both sides, which currently we can't do because we're too far out we're not going to be able to pull back 0.4 of a millimetre. Um, uh, which way are we at? 0.4 of a millimetre towards us without putting massive stress on there, which is going to overload it and it's going to alarm out. So I'm going to leave the video there because it's eight hours of complete wasted time today. And I'm just losing myself with this because if it's this difficult to set up, then every time I want to do this job, then my money's gone out the job because I can't spend a whole day not doing anything else. This is Saturday, so I knew kind of it would be a bit of a, a trial and error day and I've, I've got no problem with that. But when it comes round to, right, we've got this job, it's come through the door, an eight hours set up to align a, a trunnion, um, the job's not worth it, it's pointless. So we need to work out how to get this done and we need to do it relative. I don't mind spending an hour or even two getting it aligned, but this is not gonna work. This is too time consuming. And I've, as you can see, there's, um, there's still error and we haven't even got onto bolting on the end yet. 
pulling it down. If it pulls it down, then when, if it pulls that table down, then when it rotates, it's gonna be out on the side or it's gonna be in on the side. And that's what I was getting earlier with the small table. I could get it aligned across in Z on the Z plane when I moved in the X and I could get it aligned in the Y. And as soon as I turned it up, it was out by 0.5 and you turn it this way and obviously it's 0.5 the other way. So if I knock that true, um, then when I put it back down, it's wanting to go low and the bearings, just whatever way I do and I'm chasing my tail. Um, I don't know where to go with it, I'll be honest with you. I'm gonna keep going and we've got to get there, I have to get there, but I'm not 100% sure where I'm going wrong. So that's the video for the minute. Problems aligning the fourth axis trunnion table. Um, and yeah, I'm gonna leave this video. We're gonna end it there, it's just an update for you to show you where I'm stuck at now. First off, it was fusion. Now it's actually getting the table ready. Um, and I'm not gonna come back to this video until I have got it aligned or aligned as good as I can do because it will just be continuous 15, 20, 30, 40 minute videos of me struggling and getting nowhere, which obviously you guys wanna see how I get there if, fingers crossed, we eventually get there, but nobody wants to be watching this. So that's the end of the video. Cheers for watching. Please like and subscribe if you do like the content although I can't see you liking this very much. Um, and we'll see you again soon.